Paul said, if, I'm, if you're going to yield your bodies fully to God, holy and acceptable to God, which is just your reasonable service, if, 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 if you're going to do that, then you're going to need to have some mental preparation. There's something has to change in the way we think. Isn't that right? I saw your upon the Lord. our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHerring.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. Uh, St. John 15, the first eight verses here. I want you to uh, tune in with me today. I'm going to do my best to try to talk a little bit and share with you what God will share with me. Uh, starting in verse 1. I am, well, I hear pages, so let me wait a second. When you're ready, say amen. The Bible says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. It's okay, congregation. You can read along with her. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. But without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Herein Amen. is my Father, Father glorified, glorified that you bear much fruit. fruit. So, so shall, shall you be my, my disciples. disciples. Amen. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I magnify you. I honor you. I lift you up and extol you. I give your name to praise. I bless you because you're the great God of our salvation. And Lord, I bless you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is the mighty lion of the tribe of Judah. I thank you, Lord God. He is our soon coming king. And oh, Lord, we are delighted to be a part of your grand kingdom. Thank you, Father, for loving us to this degree that you would bring us out of darkness into light. We praise you. We give you thanks and we give you glory in Jesus' precious name. And everybody saying. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Bear with me now. I want to share a few things here. I want thoughts, things to ponder. I want you to just, just ponder these things. And uh, just, just literally ponder these things. And I hope that it will be a blessing uh, to you as it was to me. Uh, we, 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 we're targeting uh, as, a, as a, a theme or subject fruit bearing can you say that with me fruit bearing and now I want you to envision trees vines whatever bears fruit you have fruit trees of all kind right 
You have vines, you have cucumber vines, grape vines, potato vines, and you could just go on with the list of vines that bring forth fruit. And uh, the trees, the apple, the oranges, the peach tree, the pecan tree, the pear tree, uh, uh, the pomegranates, and the, you know, the list can go on and on and on of different types of fruit. Fruit. So I want you to envision with me God showing himself as a farmer does the land. A farmer here, as he husbandman or vine dresser, a farmer, he's, he, he, we have the scene here at, uh, uh, of a farmer tilling some land and plants so that the plants could grow up and be, and nur be nurtured and to bring forth fruit. This is the picture, the scene. So in the same way that a farmer tills the ground and plants and sows and tend to, tends those plants until they come to the point of maturity that they bear fruit, God, the father, the husbandman, tends the earth in the same way. And the plants and trees are you and I. And the people that are in the world, okay? And, uh, but here, since he's saying every branch in me, those that are, have a relationship with God are saved, uh, these are who he's talking about. Now, remember, uh, not too far from his departure, he shared these precious words. So, uh, he says now, every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now here Jesus the Son is showing the nature, the mind, the wisdom, the attitude of the Father which is in heaven. We would not know what his attitude and mind is apart from his word, right? But when we read his word, we know his heart, his love, his desire. So God's desire is that his trees bear fruit. And he says, verse 3, now you are clean through the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. So he tells us how to bear fruit. Are you with me? He tells us how to bear fruit. So it's not the, and so he's telling us if you abide in him, that is have a vital relationship with God, communion and fellowship with God consistently, right? Then we're going to bear fruit. Why? Because to have a, a fellowship, ongoing fellowship and a relationship with God, uh, that means that we're going to hear him. We're not only going to love him and, and to commune with him, but he's going to commune with us too, right? And whatever he tells us, then because we're in relationship with him, we're going to obey, right? And that obedience is going to bring forth fruit. Everybody got the picture? Well, let's give God some thanks for it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Now, the fruit comes through the nutrition of the, the, nutrition of the vine itself, not through the branches. I mean, it flows through the branches. So we cannot produce fruit of our own selves. That's why he says, just like a vine or, 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 or a branch can't bear fruit by itself, except it'll continue in the vine. In the same way, he says, you cannot bear fruit except you continue in me or abide in me. You abide in me and my words abide in you. It's that way, okay? It's not if you abide in me. But he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. All right? Everybody see that union? Everybody see that fellowship? So it's that, that kind of thing. We have God and his word is in us. We hear and obey. We fellowship. And then God gives us his instruction and we obey it. And here and therein lies fruit. Now, the fruit bearing, the thought, the fruit bearing. See yourself as a tree. Isaiah 61 says that we're trees. Right? And since we are trees, the Father wants us to bear fruit. Now, somebody may say, well, what are the fruits? Well, there are different kinds of fruit, but Galatians talks about love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, and faith, right? That's produced by the Spirit of God that's in us. And 
uh, that fruit will end up in soul winning, uh, helping somebody in need, doing service to humanity of some kind, uh, uh, motivated by love and motivated by the Spirit of God. That's, in essence, what he's talking about. And then it's also talking about having the fruits of patience and long-suffering and joyfulness and faith and, and meekness, those fruits that our natural man cannot bear by itself, those fruits that the regenerate man has to bear, right? Are you with me? There's two natures. There's the old nature that's supposed to be dead, right? Then there's the new nature that is alive and well and is after God, our creator. It is after that new nature now that we are, will be bearing fruit through Christ. So keeping that in mind, bearing fruit. I want you to go with me to Romans chapter 12, briefly. He tells us to abide, stay in fellowship and communion with God. But he's going to tell us in more detail here as we look at Romans chapter um, 12. Romans, Paul said... Verse 1, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. All right? So we, here we have Paul saying uh, to the Jews, present your bodies, present yourself, your whole self, right? A living sacrifice. In the Old Testament, they had sacrifices an animal was sacrificed apart from his will an animal they were taken and offered they were killed and their blood was offered up as a an atonement or sacrifice for the sins of humanity now paul is not saying offer yourself your body is a, a dead sacrifice because our body because we're alive in god right so now he's saying offer your body is a living sacrifice that means we live we're living in christ but we are yielding over ourselves to God for him to live and for us to die of our own will and purpose. Did I lose anybody? So that is, now here he's, he's telling us, now we're still talking bearing fruit. And Paul said, present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your real service. That means to yield to God. Look at somebody say, yield to God. I asked God, and he said, this is a short form of, this is a, in essence, that's what I'm saying, yield to God. Yield your body, yield yourself to God. The other part, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The second part means to be prepared mentally. Can you say that with me? To be prepared mentally. See, there is a mental preparation. This, this part, I'm going to dwell a little bit on the mental preparation for purpose. Now, what he is implying is this. In order for us to yield to God fully, in order for us to prove what is good and acceptable and perfect concerning the will of God, there has to be a mental preparation. Are you with me? We cannot and we will not do it until we have been mentally prepared to do so. All right. So, uh, so Paul, knowing this, there, there's a desire to do things, but he says the will is present, but how to perform that will? Because there's two natures. The old nature here always sometimes gets in the way and fight against the new nature. So that duel, that, that, that thing constantly goes. The old nature is corrupt according to the flesh, the fleshly desires. You and I, uh, you know, that part of us before we got saved. And even though we are saved, sometimes those parts still want to live. That old part of us, you know, that, that is to be dead with Christ. And, uh, but we can mortify it, we can put it to death. Through the Spirit of God. God will lead us, and as we obey him, it will put to death. Now, but I want to focus in on what he said, verse 2, the mental preparation. Be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. Be ye changed. And in the Greek, it has the word metamorphos. It actually is 
saying a total change. Be changed by renewing the mind. Somebody say the mind. The mind has everything to do with the thought patterns that right and, and the, the way we think. So, so now, you, you follow with me now. The, the, the thinking, the thought process plays a very vital part in our yielding and obeying God. So now, if I don't know that, then I may be frustrated myself trying to obey God because I don't really understand what it takes, right? Paul said, if, I'm, if you're going to yield your bodies fully to God, holy and acceptable to God, which is just your reasonable service, if, 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 if you're going to do that, then you're going to need to have some mental preparation. There's something has to change in the way we think. Isn't that right? You know, he said, don't be conformed to this world. Don't fashion your life. Larry, don't fashion your life after the pattern of the world system and how the world thinks. He said, you cannot perform my will with that kind of mind because the world is sinful. And I, I say that in humility, in humility. The world, for the most part, is lost. Okay? So a lost and dying world cannot please God because they don't know him first, right? But we have the privilege of knowing God. Christ lives in us. Now, okay, we accept the fact that we belong to God, right? We accept the fact that we are uncondemned, right? We're justified, so you can't be justified and condemned at the same time. It's either or. Are you with me? I'm either justified or I am condemned. Since I am not condemned, since you are not condemned, that you're blessed and you're justified, right? Everybody digest that. Now, don't nobody be condemned because you're not condemned if, you, if you're part of Christ. So, knowing that we are, belong to God and God loves us and his love toward us is perfect, now we move on to experience purpose in our lives, right? That's what God was reminding me. In other words, when we bear fruit, then we live and move into the purpose for being here on earth. You see, that's what you want to do, right? Isn't that right? There's nothing more fulfilling than operating in purpose. When a person operates in purpose, he feels fulfilled, he feels useful, he feels satisfied, he feels blessed and content now because he's a useful person and he's bearing fruit. He has a purpose. He serves a purpose. And one of the things that is very important for humanity, whether they're saved or unsaved, is to have a purpose for, re for being. And so when God is saying, when we bear fruit, the fruit that God, by the Spirit, then we serve God's purpose. Look at somebody say purpose. So we want purpose. That's what we want to do. We, want, we don't want to be just a Christian. We want to serve God's purpose. All right? All right. So now he says, be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. The mind has to change. The way I think, the way you think has to change in some areas. I believe that we all have begun, God has already begun that process in all of us. But there's a const constant process of changing. Be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. And the more the we re uh, our mind is renewed in knowledge, there's more of a change taking place in us, you know. And then there's a more yieldedness. The more we learn, the more we understand, the more we change, we're yielding more and more and more to God until there is that holiness ah we belong to Jesus Christ uh, his will is our will his desires are our desires uh, are you hearing what I'm saying and, and every time you ask God for something he's doing it because now you are in union with him you are walking with him you want what he wants in your life hallelujah and so you don't have a struggle getting a prayer answered anymore because uh, you're in fellowship with God, hallelujah. You know his mind, you know his heartbeat, you understand what's acceptable and pleasing to God. So, hallelujah, you're bearing fruit now. And the Bible says, and whatsoever you do, it's prospering now. Hallelujah. How many want to prosper in God? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so now to remind, we said the mind, mind is important. Now, I, I'm going to do this here. Um, I know we, we're, we're, we're on a regular preaching service, but I want somebody to read Ephesians 4.23.
Somebody just throw up your hand and tell me you would get it. Who would do that? Okay, Mac. And somebody get for me 1 Peter 4. Who would find that? 1 Peter 4. Uh, yes, uh, Brilicia. Okay, so who will find Philippians chapter 2, verse 5? Okay, 1. And somebody find um, 2 Corinthians 10. I can't see too far back here. 2 Corinthians 10. Anybody? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. It's just joy. Amen. Thank you. All right. Now, and somebody find Acts 20, verse 19. One more. That's the last one uh, for now. Who will find the book of Acts? All right. Uh, that's who? Oh, Jerusalem. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't look at it. Okay. All right. Well, uh, since uh, this is Tia, I believe. You raise your hand. Find Philippians 4.13. Okay. All right. Now, remember this. I want you to, I'm moving fast, but I want you to know this. We said mental preparation is extremely important, right? Now, you, now guess who's found that out? The, the Army, the military, Air Force, Navy, Marine. They found that out. They get a bunch of soldiers, take them out, just barely 18 or 19 or whatever, and now they're going to make soldiers out of them, right? And they know that if they don't get their minds renewed, they're not too good for them. So it takes them through the basic training. They drill them. But before they finish with them, they are renewing the way they think. And I, I laugh at this. I've never been in service. But listen, they know that if a man, he can think he's, can do anything, but he get out there, and when he face live bullets, it ain't funny no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mac, know what I'm talking about. This is for real. It, it, this is, no, this is no, no practice. This is no play. It's for real. And one bullet could take him out of here, so it gets serious. But the practice, the training was important, right? And uh, in other words, if you take that soldier out there and you put him out there on a, a, when it, in a time of war, there's no way in this world he's going to function right. Because when the bum stops dropping, he's going to cry out. He may be crying, Mama, you know, get me out of here. Why? Because his mind hadn't been renewed. But when, the, when, the, when Uncle Sam finishes with him, whether he can do it or not, he believes differently, right? Because something has happened to his mind. Now, God, same way with God. God knows you and I are not going to go out there and try to fight no giants. Do nothing if we aren't mentally prepared, right? We have an envy, enemy, and he's for real. He's not a plaything, you know what I'm saying? He's not a, you know how they, people have an image of a, a little old man with a little long tail and a, some a, a horns and things like that. He's that and he's more, but he's serious. He is a real live enemy out to destroy the people of God. We know he's not going to do it, but he takes some people out here. You know what I'm saying? But the training is important for warfare, right? So here Paul is saying, now Paul was a warrior. He said, be transformed, be changed. By the renewing of your mind. And uh, so that you might prove the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. That's the bottom line. That's the, and then you're going to bear that fruit, that kind of fruit that God wants. So if I, and, and, and since this is what it's going to take. A prepared mind. A mind that says, I can do everything through Jesus Christ. That says there's no weapon that's formed against me going to prosper. Now listen. It's easy to say when there's nothing against us. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's so easy to say all the right words. But brother, when those fiery trials come, fiery darts thrown at you then... That's when you know what's in you. Isn't that right? That's when you know where you are in God. Hallelujah. If you can say, oh, no, 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 I'm not moved by this. Uh, no, 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 I'm not moved by this. Then you know you got something, right? You remember Paul? 
Paul had been in and out of jail, shipwrecked, tw- left for dead twice, whipped 39 strikes two or three times. Uh, I mean, just uh, thrown overboard in the sea, perils in the sea, uh, uh, dangers everywhere. And, and so one day, Paul was headed for Jerusalem. And boy, the prophets came. Boy, they, one of them, Agabus, and the other day, grabbed the girdle and began to wrap him up and said, Paul, thus saith the Lord, you know, you shall not go into Jerusalem. This is what's going to happen to the man that goes to Jerusalem and so on. Boy, they prophesied. The other ones start crying, Paul, please, please don't go. Paul does all of, all of a sudden, he said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Well, what y'all mean? You're breaking my heart. I'm not only willing to, to go to Jerusalem, but I'm to die for him. I'm willing to die for him. In other words, my mind is made up. I, I, I don't have any problem in that area. I came, I know that I'm going to suffer persecution if I live for God. I don't care. You can't scare me with that. So leave me alone and let me do what I need to do. But he was prepared mentally. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And, I, and, and as God began to take me through those scriptures, you know what I said? I said, oh, God, we're not prepared to meet our enemy. So that's why when Satan throws these little things, you got to muster up some praise out of the people. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Oh, my God. We feel like God's doing us wrong. We feel like he's not fair to us and all this stuff is like, and I, 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 I start crying. I said, God, we're not prepared to do much battle. That's a problem. And I begin to say, Lord, teach me so I can teach others. When you start, let me tell you what Jesus said. He said, if any man going to come after me before you decide I'm going to follow Jesus, you need to stop and count the cost. Isn't that what he said? See, some people get in the blindfold, they says, you know. And when they get in, they say, oh, Lord, I didn't know it was going to be all this, man. I, you know, I just, I want out of here, you know. But, but when, you, when you sit down and say, now, wait a minute now, do I really, am I really ready to follow God? It ain't, it's, no, it's no piece of cake. And listen, and the preachers that make it feel like it's a piece of cake, they're lying to you. Because the Bible tells me differently. The Bible says, all that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall do what? Suffer persecution. 